Hey, all together. Here we go. 1 Corinthians 10 31. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10 31. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to go into the Word of God. And as we look to close out this uh, lesson here, lesson for modesty and appropriateness, we pray you would just bless and the discussion time that we have as we close this out, Lord, and uh, lead us into the next quarter. We look forward to the blessing from uh, the men, uh, brothers uh, Ken and uh, brother uh, Mark and Serge, Lord, that you would use them marvelously and miraculously to affect change in the life of believers through the Holy Spirit's power and the Word of God. And Lord, may we see the same things from this lesson that we're about to uh, finish up and conclude on modesty and appropriateness. Lord God, may you be lifted up on high. We may see you, Lord, through all that we do, and we'll get a glimpse of the glory uh, that you would have us to share with you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. We're going to get into uh, the final stages of this. Amen. Uh, this is the last time that we're going to teach this probably for the quarter uh, because next quarter we're going to start the parenting class back up. Brother Mark and uh, Brother Duffy and Brother Serge will be sharing the, the pulpit and Sunday school time. Uh, they'll be switching up a week after week and Brother Serge will be having the last uh, couple weeks in the month uh, while we go next door and uh, teach uh, the parenting class and some more things there. Then we'll probably come back again uh, coming in the winter quarter, start right back up on the etiquette part in this book, and uh, that should be a blessing over the Christmas time frame. Amen. So what I want to do here is go over the questions number 9 and 10, and then after questions 9 and 10, do just a brief review. Make sure if there are any blanks you need to get filled in, I will fill those in. In, and uh, that'll be a blessing. Amen. Uh, so are we ready to finish this out? Amen. Amen. I was ready last year to finish this out. Amen. Amen. Just that I got bogged down. Yeah. Amen. All right. Well, we left off on question number nine. Yeah. Uh, question number nine, you should be on page 38, yeah. and uh, let's go to the reference that they have there, Proverbs chapter 7, Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 7, and uh, verse number 6. If y'all will excuse me, my wireless mic is uh, not acting oh, no. right, so I'm confined up here. Right. Proverbs chapter number 7 and uh, verse number 6. Proverbs 7, verse number 6. Okay, and the, the passage here is going all the way down from 6 uh, to 22. And uh, who is not uh, ashamed to read and would like to read a lengthy passage? Miss Katie, if you could read the 6 through 22 for us, I'd appreciate that. Amen. Well, that's a lengthy passage, yes, but this is one of an harlot uh, attracting a young man. My, my, my Carmen, uh, my wife and I, when we were uh, teenage teachers over in Belgium, we actually enacted this out, uh, showing our teenagers uh, how... Uh, 
behavior can affect someone else and how uh, attire affects someone else and how solicitation can affect someone else. And so we, we enacted this passage out over in our teen class and, and they marveled at how applicable it was to today, uh, being that this was back in, uh, when we did this, it was back in 95 or so, uh, but it's very still applicable today. Uh, the, the passage here is of a man who really doesn't have his thinking cap on and he's approached by a young lady in uh, a harlot's attire and he is attracted by how she looks but also by what she says and uh, he is like a, an animal uh, and he is driven by his animal desires and instincts and so you find out what's going on there. Uh, the blank here it should say this the way you dress should encourage growth in you and others. The way you dress should encourage growth in you and others. By the passage that we just read, you won't find this young man growing in a good way. Uh, you will find him growing in a bad way, amen? Uh, you'd find him growing in an abnormal way or in a wicked way, amen? Uh, so the way you dress should encourage growth in you and others. And then there's a blank there. The first principle is that your dress and your behavior are interrelated. The first principle is that your dress and your behavior are interrelated. Now let me ask you a question. Is there truth to that statement? Give me some input. How is there truth to that statement? Your dress and your behavior are interrelated. Your dress reflects your behavior and your behavior reflects your dress. How is that true? Yes, express heritage. Well, if you don't dress in a uh, coma, you dress thinking about what you're going to wear, why you're going to wear it, and if you have any kind of thinking process, you should also consider what the consequences of that dress may be. Amen. I'm going to go so far say that some don't, but I say if I more do, then the Amen. 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 All right. Any? Amen. Amen. Ms. Dawson? Amen. Amen. Yeah, Sherman. Amen. It, it, it makes a difference. It does make a difference. I notice a difference even in myself if uh, uh, I've got a suit jacket on right now. I'll take my suit jacket off. And when I take my suit jacket off, I, I feel free. -er. And so I will act different. Now if I take my tie off, I will feel a little freer. And I'll act different. Uh, yesterday, I had the boys went to get a haircut. You guys would probably just fall dead. I had my Chicago Bulls shirt on from the 3 P. Had my red shorts on, below the knee. 
had my, my flip flops on, my Birkenstocks, and I, I mean, I look like from the hippie days, amen? And then y'all was like, boy, is, who is that? Is that Pastor? And uh, hey, I went over to take the boys, get their haircut, have my little t shirt on, and hey, there, there we go. You know, I have my shirt tucked in, I look presentable, amen? But I was casual. I, I felt totally different than I feel today. Why? Dress makes a difference. Yes, sir. Uh, now, yes, sir. I was only going down the street to get the boys' hair cut. I was presentable. I was covered up where I need to be covered up. Amen. I was supporting my team. Amen, Sherman. Amen. Supporting my team. Amen. And, uh, hey, I was good to go. Uh, but just the way I was dressed, uh, it made me uh, a little bit looser, but still cognizant of the fact of who I am, but you still have to be aware. But it does make your behavior a little different. Yes, sir. It does. It does. I mean, I wouldn't hesitate to go pick up a ball and do one of those numbers. I would dare not do that like this. Uh, I would be quick to go get a football and throw it. I would dare not do that like this. Although I have been known to try and show out in the back back there when everybody's gone. Amen. Uh, why? Your dress does make a difference. Amen. The boys say, Daddy, let's go run. G2 cares not what he's got on. He's going to run. I can't do that. So when you look at the, the way you behave or the way you dress, it does make a difference. Studies reveal that the better you dressed, the better you did at whatever it was. Case in point, uh, how many of y'all play basketball before as young children? Hey. Uh, you know the starters have the best looking uniforms, right? They do. The starting five have the best and then the reject uniforms go to the ones on the bench. Oh, yes. I was on the bench. <laughs> and so I had the blue shorts that were a different color blue from the top. And uh, the starters played good. But when us bench folk got in with them different colors, we did not play good. Why? Because we didn't look good. Amen. <laughs> we played terrible. We got out there, man. I was on slip and slide shoes, those PF sliders they had back in the days that were made out of plastic instead of rubber. Amen. <laughs> and we had on these socks that didn't match. Amen. Uh, the starting five played tremendous. But when us bench folk got in, man, I mean, we just didn't look good. And it showed. Now, today, I mean, they, they probably don't do that. Everybody's got the same uniform back then. We couldn't afford it, amen. I went to a little old Catholic school. We had no money, amen. And uh, we looked bad. But uh, the, the secular studies reveal that if you dress well, you do well in school, in sports, at work, when studying, when reading, when walking with God, then it is the same. We dress well for the activities that we are seeking to grow in. I'll ask you a question. When you're wearing sweatpants, how do you feel? You feel different than when you're wearing a dress, don't you ladies? You act different as well. If you're wearing a pair of sweatpants and you're out there working out or whatever you're doing, and uh, you would dare not act the same way when you go and put your dress on. You, you, it's just different. Same way with the men. If a man puts on a tie and a suit, a nice pair of slacks, he's going to be different than when he puts on a sweatpants and, and, and goes to do whatever he's going to do. It's a difference there. Even when you put on a tie and a suit, there's a difference here. The, the connotation here uh, about this harlot here is that she is being influencing in her dress, and the way we dress should encourage growth in us and others and not detract away from that. And so that's the first principle there. If we're going to be God's people, if we're God's people, if we're Christians, then I need to make sure that I am not causing someone else to stumble, but I'm actually helping others in their growth. I'm not detracting from them. I'm not causing them to stumble. By the way, the Bible does talk about causing others to stumble, and I don't want to be a stumbling block for others. Uh, so that's the first principle there. The second principle is this. Uh, your dress affects others and their growth. Duh. Your dress affects others and their growth. In this passage, I mean, it's a simple one that was seduced by the immodest dress of a young woman. Now, does it have to be just a simple one that can be seduced by the dress of an immodest woman? No. It can be the undefensed one. It can be the one caught at a low point in their life. It could be the rejected one in their life. It could be the insecure one in their life. It could be any of the above that have the um, ability to be seduced. By the way, how many of us has the ability to be seduced? Every last one of us. What is going to detail my ability to be seduced? No matter what it is. Now, not, not just in, in immorality. Uh, be it finances, be it education, uh, be it humanism. What, what, is, what, is, what is behind my ability to be seduced? What is going to seduce me? What would it take to seduce me? Serge? Lust? Desire. 
I'm going to be seduced by my lust or desire. Whatever it is I desire, I will be seduced by it. That makes sense? So if money is your lust or your desire, guess what? You'll be seduced by it. If immorality is your desire or affections of others, you'll be seduced by it. If education is your desire or your lust, you'll be seduced by it. Uh, if m music is your desire, you'll be seduced by it or, or, or lust. Uh, whatever it is that is your desire, you can be seduced by it. This passage just happens to be a harlot. Just have, but you can put anything else in there. We just have to be talking about modesty and appropriateness. But whatever it is that is your desire, what do pastors have to watch out for oftentimes, not on the sinful uh, 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 realm, but what do pastors have to watch out for oftentimes on the desire level? Sarah? Uh, pride, or actually priorities. Priorities. Why? As a pastor, I have so many things that I want to do for everybody. If I'm not careful, my pride will get the best of me. And I think I can do it all and I don't prioritize and I do none of it or I do the wrong things. Why? As a pastor, my heart's desire is to help people. And oftentimes, if I don't prioritize, I'm not going to get it right because that's my desire. I want to please God by helping people, and I've got to get that right. By the way, where does it start for me? Right there. And where does it go after that? Little ones. Then it comes to the church. You say, well, what about us? If I don't take care of them, there is no us. <laughs> Amen. Is Sarah going to say something? Mm. Right. And, and that's true. And the Bible does address that as well. And that's a good, very, very good point because a lot of pastors have been taken in that. Praise, praise God, a lot of them. And uh, he brings up a very good point because that does happen oftentimes. It, it really does. And so got to guard against that. But often I know for, for me, that's, that's one of my weaknesses. Uh, and so y'all know how to pray for me now. I want to help everybody, but I've got to prioritize because then I find myself spreading myself so thin that I'm not any good to anybody, amen, because I'm trying to help everybody because I can't uh, get around quick enough. And so I've got to prioritize to make sure that I'm taking care of what I need to take care of. And that can be a, a, a hindrance for me or a stumbling block for me. But it stems from our desire. And you've got to ask yourself, what is my desire? And what, what is it that can seduce me? Uh, now, again, we're talking about modesty and appropriateness uh, in this realm. Uh, is my dress in such a way where it's not going to be a hindrance, but it actually helps others to grow and it helps others to mature? Uh, or is it going to detract? Amen. Uh, but the other realm uh, is applicable as well because I want to make sure of that. Uh, so when you look at that, that that's those two principles. Your dress affects your behavior uh, and they are interrelated. Amen. Uh, dress reflects your behavior, your behavior reflects your dress. Then the second one, uh, your dress affects others uh, and uh, their growth. Amen. Uh, this guy was uh, seduced by this. Amen. And that's something that we do have to uh, consider in our dressing. Amen. Uh, and you have to ask yourself this question. Am I influencing people towards God or away from God by how I dress? Am I influencing people towards God or away from God by how I dress? And that's a question that you would have to ask yourself. And so you want to choose to dress in a way that encourages your growth and the growth of others around you. Amen. If you do what we talked about earlier, and we talked about uh, in the morning, say, okay, Lord, what do you want me to wear? God, how does this look to you? Uh, how, do you how do you want me to dress? Uh, one, one of the things that uh, my, my wife and I, we had talked about when she had gotten pregnant way back when she was trying to buy all these maternity clothes and we couldn't find any modest maternity clothes. And uh, we had talked about the young children, the young uh, uh, ladies that were like 20 and 25 and 26 and how they weren't wearing maternity clothes. And I said, is it because they can't find maternity clothes, which we couldn't really find any, uh, that were modest? I said, or is it that they just want to continue to be small and slim and, and, and wear the same stuff and squeeze the poor baby's head to death? Amen. And, uh, you know, I, I couldn't figure out. I, I thought, well, man, give them the benefit of the doubt. They just couldn't find anything modest. Amen. Uh, but th that was some of the, one of the things that we had saw. There was a trend where young ladies were not wearing uh, 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 maternity clothes. Now, uh, 
Why didn't they wear them? I, your guess is as good as mine, but there weren't many modest ones out there, amen, as we went around. So my wife, I mean, we, we had a time finding modest stuff. Finally found some, amen, but we did, amen. Uh, so when you look at that, uh, modesty, uh, growth in you and others. Dress for Christ and you'll be okay. Number 10. The way you dress, uh, now they, they put always here, and I, we, we're going to talk about that a little bit. The way you dress always, I put hyphen often, reflects your level of spiritual maturity. And I want us to discuss that statement. The way you dress always, I put slash often, reflects your level of spiritual maturity. The way you dress always slash often reflects your spiritual maturity. So let's, let's discuss that just for a moment. Does the way you dress always reflect your level of maturity or does it often reflect your level of spiritual maturity? Devin says often. Why would you say often, Devin? Now, in, in your private home, though, we want you to be, you know, comfortable there. Y'all, that, that's, that's honey bunny time there, amen? We're talking about if we go out in public. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a, that's a uniform. You have to do that, okay? Understand, okay? Give me some other input. O often or always? Because they put down always. That means that's a blanket statement. The way I dress always uh, uh, talks about my, my level of spiritual maturity. John? <laughs> amen good point he goes on the counter amen people that wear it tight they, they could be mean as the devil amen doesn't make them any spiritual amen yes yes Rose Amen. Amen. Uh, Monique. A rebellious moment. <laughs> Go ahead, sister. I'll say it for you. Amen. We, we have our rebellious streets. I know what God said, and I know what I'm going to do. I like this. I was picking with somebody the other day. It was a Christian. They had a, on a T-shirt, and it had some things on it that were probably not Christian. And I said, well, what does that mean? And they began to tell me, and then they kind of blushed about it, you know, and I said, well, that's an interesting shirt. They were like, ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, that's all I said. I just said, what does that mean? They told me what it meant. I said, oh, that's interesting. Boy, they felt so bad. I wasn't trying to make them feel bad. I was curious as to what it meant because it just looked ungodly, <laughs> amen. <laughs> Uh, so, the way you dress always slash often reflects your level of spiritual maturity. As I read that, um, I, you know, I thought, you know, I don't think it's always, but if you look at it from the standpoint of my Christian maturity, in a sense, it is always. In, in a sense, it is always. Now, uh, is it always an accurate description of the whole content of what's going on? No, it's not always inaccurate like PT. Uh, that's beyond my control. People can't discern that oftentimes, like what John said. Uh, some of these guys are not even godly at all, and they still have a tie on, okay? But the, the, the point is, as a Christian, we want to bring the level up and not down. And so, in a sense, I can understand why they would say always, 
but I also understand often, and that's why I threw often in there, because I think if we're not careful, we can become very dogmatic, and, and it can be a stumbling block for us at times. And so uh, I put down the way you dress always, less often reflects your level of spiritual maturity. Now, should the way I dress reflect my level of spiritual maturity? Yes. Somebody that got saved yesterday, are they going to dress the same way somebody has gotten been saved for 10 years? No, probably not. Unless what? Growth. Unless they have not grown. If the person that got saved yesterday is dressing like the person has been saved for 10 years, what can I assume? Somebody didn't grow. Their level of maturity or spiritual maturity has not caught up with them. Okay, and so let's put down this first blank here uh, because uh, they, they, they tell us to go to, uh, what is that, 1 Peter 3 and 4 there and then 1 Corinthians, amen. Uh, simply put, people who are completely taken up by how they look physically are focusing on the wrong parts of life. Focusing on the wrong parts of life. Is there more to us than what meets the eye? Yes, but what do we normally put the most significance on? That which meets the eye. Uh, but there's more to us. Ladies, how many of y'all would give two cents for a man that would want to marry you just because of how you look? They could care less how you think, how you act, your emotions. They just like the way you look. You wouldn't give them two cents for not thinking of you as a whole person. You say, there's more to me than just my body and my looks, amen. And, you know, but some ladies relish on that. There ain't, there ain't nothing to me but my body and my looks. Boy, I, I feel sorry for you. I feel real sorry for you because one day you're going to get old. And you're going to get wrinkly. And you're going to get saggy and baggy. Teeth going to fall out. Hair going to fall out. And then what you going to do? You're going to say, do you still love me for my looks? They're going to say, uh, no. I didn't marry you for your looks. I married you for you. But more, more, more times than not, we put more emphasis on the wrong parts of life uh, physically. And if that happens, then we're spiritually immature, amen. It should be, our first concern should be our heart that's right with God and our appearance that's pleasing to God. That should be our first concern. My heart's right with God and my appearance is pleasing to God. That's, that's the way it should be, amen. Let's go over here to uh, 1 Peter chapter 3 and verses 3 and 4 uh, because they, the, those verses are the ones that talk about the, uh, the ladies' attire there. 1 Peter uh, 3, 3 and 4. And it says, whose adorning, let it uh, not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold or putting on of apparel, uh, but let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Here uh, in First Peter, uh, Peter is clearly talking about the outward of the lady is not what should be the most showy and that which she should be uh, putting forward, but it should be the inside of her which should be coming out. It should be the hidden man of the heart. That's what she should put her is on because that's what God is wanting her to do. Uh, and so when you look at that, that's what he's talking about. The second part of that, that, uh, that phrase there, uh, uh, where are we at? Oh, as you grow in maturity, uh, your clothing simply, your clothing will simply be one of many ways that you choose to honor God outwardly. Choose to honor God outwardly. Honor God outwardly. By the way, uh, your dress is not a fashion statement or an identity crisis or an attempt to gain popularity or an acceptance. Your dress is the outward revelation of an inward spirit of godliness or holiness. Amen. Amen. Your dress is an inward reflection or an outward reflection of your inward godliness or holiness. Or as we're going to talk about this morning in Sunday, school, uh, Sunday morning service, Amen. sanctification. Uh, so that's basically what you're dealing with here uh, as you're showing your outward. I mean, it's your heart for God and your relationship with him that's showing outwardly. So those two questions there uh, should be simply put people who are completely taken up by how they look physically are focusing on the wrong parts of life. And then the second one, as you grow in maturity, your clothing will simply be one of many ways that you choose to honor God outwardly. Again, only one of many ways. It, does your dress make up all of you? No. I can give you a lady that can look like a beauty queen and have a tongue like a serpent and she is ugly as dirt. She can look like a beauty queen and she could just, I mean, have a foul mouth and it's slanderous and she is ugly as sin. I mean, she can be just as, as attractive as all get out, but I mean, have so many other flaws. There's so much more to us than how we look. 
But oftentimes, the first thing that people see is how we look. That's why we want to keep the standard of Christ likeness up high. Amen. All right, let's fill in these last couple of blanks here on your conclusion there. Uh, in your conclusion, amen, here we go. There is coming a day when God himself will literally determine exactly what you wear for all eternity. Amen. <laughs> there is coming a day when God himself will literally determine exactly what you wear for all eternity. If that is the case... Why not start now asking him what he wants you to wear, amen? How many of y'all knew that? Uh, the Bible talks about we're going to be changed, amen? Guess what? These clothes ain't going with us. God's going to give us something to wear. And guess what? If God's going to clothe us for all eternity, don't you think he's concerned about what we're wearing right now? Why do you think he's got to clothe us in heaven anyway? Sarah? We're all uniform, amen. We've got the same thing, amen. Now, of course, we'll have our glorified body. We're going to have our new, I mean, everything about us will be new. We won't think the same way that we think down here. Hallelujah, amen. We won't think the same way. We won't see the same way. Nothing will be the same as it is down here. Praise God for that, amen. Uh, now, what, uh, the Bible talks about robes of righteousness, amen, white raiment and things of that nature, amen. I, I don't know what we're going to have, amen, but I know it's not going to be three-piece suits, amen. You say, are we going to have uh, robes like the uh, the angels had? I have no idea, amen. But whatever we have, guess what? We're going to have it for all eternity. So we're going to have it for all eternity. I think uh, God is probably a little interested in what we wear right now, amen. Uh, so he will clothe us for all eternity. Think of that, amen. Uh, so uh, uh, Revelation 4.4 4 says this. It should be down in your book. Round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Notice there is no accentuation of being a three-piece suit with twelve buttons, and uh, how, how the threads are all knit together, and uh, cuffs in their shoes. It just says white raiment. It just said crowns of gold. There is no kind of you know, the, the, the shirt, the tie, the color, the, the hue, amen? Just white raiment. Uh, so we're going to be covered from head to toe, amen, by God. And that's going to be an absolute phenomena that we will see, amen? Uh, so let's put on every day from this point forward what God would have us to put on, a true reflection of Christ's likeness in our heart. We're all at different levels of spirituality. And so the level of spirituality you're at, you just want to ask God to move you to the next level that he wants you to be at, amen? Uh, if there is a next level that he wants you to be at, amen? By the way, there is a next level that God wants each and every one of us to be at in our spiritual lives, amen? We continue to go up and 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 up until we get to glory. So there is still more that God is wanting to do in our lives as we get closer to him. And again, we'll see a little bit more about that uh, today in sanctification. This particular lesson here is talking about modesty and appropriateness. God is interested in us, first of all, having a heart for him so that we can first and foremost be modest, dress the way biblically he would have us to dress, and then appropriate. What does the occasion call for? And then when I look at the modesty that he wants me to have, and then I say, okay, appropriate, what does the occasion call for? Now I can make a, a real decision based upon God's word on what God wants me to wear, where he wants me to wear it. Amen. And then that's going to make the difference. Let's go back and I'll fill in some of the blanks for you. Go back to uh, your first chapter there. Not your first chapter, but the beginning of lesson four. And I'll fill in what uh, you need. And uh, let's see here. Where are you at here? Chapter number one, or for, uh, question number one. The way you dress always matters to God. Okay, page 34 in your books. The way you dress always matters to God. That's the first one. Amen. And then down there, uh, what we wear should reflect the fact that Christ lives in us. Simply put, I should be willing to identify my life as a Christian through my appearance. Number two, what, the way you dress identifies your character and level of respect. Okay. Then uh, your heart, purity, and holiness should define what you wear. And then um, how you dress always identifies you as a particular kind of person. Uh, the second principle is this, your dress reveals your level of respect, respect for your God, your environment, yourself, others around you. Number three, the way you dress should always honor God. And 
Clothing choices should be driven by desire to please God. Number four, the way you dress should be appropriate to the occasion. There are clothing styles uh, that are feminine, clothing styles that are masculine. At home, be modest, be covered, be appropriate across genders, even among family members. At church, be more respectful to God than you would be any other occasion. At school, honor the standards and guidelines set up by your school authorities. At activities or in public, be Christ ambassador wherever you go. At work, honor those in authority at your workplace without compromising your standards as a Christian. At special events, show respect for those hosting, those uh, being honored, and those attending the event. Uh, number five, the way you dress should not directly identify with the world. Uh, with uh, my dress, oh, where's that at? Which one did I, did I miss one? Well, number five, right? Okay. Okay, when I'm loving God and living for him, my dress will reveal it. Number six, the way you dress should lead others to respect you more. Amen, that's a big one. Uh, people immediately... Uh, formulate a respect level towards you based on how you're dressed. Number seven. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, the other one. Uh, respect you more is the ending of that one. Respect you more. Number seven, the way you dress should influence others toward God. Then your appearance always influences others. People judge your appearance and they judge God by your appearance. Decide that in your choice of clothing, you will be a witness for Christ, not a witness for culture. Eight, the way you dress should show respect for godly authorities. Adorn means to put in proper order. Uh, in other words, for a teenager uh, and sometimes for adults, uh, this is more of obedience choice than a fashion choice. And then the way you dress should encourage growth in you and others. We looked at that today. First principle is your dress and your behavior interrelated. Second principle, your dress affects others and their growth. Ten, level of spiritual maturity. And we put the way you dress always slash often reflects your level of spiritual maturity. Focusing on the wrong parts of life. Choosing to honor God outwardly. Then conclusion, there is coming a day when God himself will literally determine exactly what you wear for all eternity. And that sums up a modesty and appropriateness, and I hope that that, that was a, a blessing to you and encouragement. Maybe you picked up some things that you didn't already know. Uh, once we start up in the uh, winter quarter, we'll be going on to lesson five, appropriate conduct and etiquette. I think that is something that every child of God needs. I think that's something that every person needs as well. We need appropriate conduct, and uh, we definitely need the etiquette uh, to handle ourselves uh, appropriately. Amen. You get a chance, come up and look at some of the books that are up here. Please don't take any, but feel free to kind of look at those and kind of see what you might have a desire to have and to read. Amen. Father, we do thank you for this time. We do pray that you would bless the refreshments in the back as well as Brother Serge, as he uh, is going to be teaching next week, uh, you would give him the study time and the presentation time, and Lord, just the time to bring forth the word that you laid upon his heart to us, and Lord, help us uh, understand modesty and appropriateness, God, to be concerned about uh, what you think, first and foremost, and may our hearts be reflected in that which we wear, and then may others around us see the godliness that we have in our lives based upon how we're dressed. Lord, thank you so much for loving us. Now dismiss us with thy blessings in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You are dismissed.